Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I rise, to, rise tonight to, on adjournment to talk about uh, wilderness because there's been some significant uh, developments in this regard over recent uh, weeks. Um, wilderness, it's not only uh, a third of Tasmania in the Wilderness World Heritage Area, uh, it's not only an important uh, tool to protect uh, the values of the World Heritage Area, it's not only central to our brand and identity and a key driver of tourism. You know, many people uh, demonstrate that wilderness and wild places are a major motivating uh, factor for visiting Tasmania, and it's not only a really important um, uh, value that Tasmanians uh, 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 seek out uh, for the solitude, for peace, for connection, for reflection, and for a sense of uh, place. Wilderness is actually a, a thing. You can map it, you can measure it, you can degrade it, you can restore it. Uh, and it's got a number of key elements. Uh, to have wilderness, you need to be remote from mechanised access. It needs to be undisturbed by, undisturbed by colonial or modern society. And it needs to be big enough uh, to enable the long-term function of natural systems and diversity. Now, the Tasmanian Wilderness World Heritage Area Management Plan defines wilderness as, and I quote, a wilderness area is an area that is of sufficient size, remoteness, and naturalness to enable the long-term integrity of its natural systems, diversity and processes, the maintenance of cultural landscapes and the provision of a wilderness recreation experience. So the reason I raise this tonight, uh, Mr Speaker, is because last month the World Heritage Committee endorsed a retrospective statement of outstanding universal value for the Tasmanian Wilderness World Heritage Area. Now, this, uh, it's, it, this is a, the definitive document of the values of the World Heritage Area, and there hasn't been a complete one uh, literally since the property was inscribed in 1989. Now, there's two significant things in this retrospective statement of uh, outstanding universal value. Firstly, it embraces the Aboriginal heritage uh, values and the ongoing connection of the Palawa people to the Tasmanian Wilderness World Heritage Area uh, and its country and values. Uh, that was something that was sorely missing in the official documents of uh, the World Heritage Area. And secondly, it highlighted the importance of wilderness as a value in the natural criteria of the property and also as a component of its integrity. And an in integrity is a component of world heritage uh, and it's a measure of the quality, the intactness and effectively the veracity of a World Heritage property. Um, the Tasmanian Wilderness World Heritage Area is truly special. It meets more criteria than any other World Heritage property uh, on earth uh, when you combine both its natural and cultural heritage values. And the uh, retrospective statement of outstanding universal value um, talks up wilderness and identifies wilderness as a key value numerous times. Uh, and I'll quote a couple of times from it into Hansard. Uh, it says, this is one of the world's, this is about the Tasmanian Wilderness property. This is one of the world's largest and most spectacular temperate wilderness areas and a precious cultural landscape for Tasmanian Aboriginal people who have lived here for approximately 40,000 years. Uh, under criterion nine, the property's great size and wilderness character enable significant natural, biological and geomorphological processes to continue in terrestrial, coastal, riverine and mountain ecosystems. And under integrity, a critical component of OUV, uh, its large extent, remoteness and quality of wilderness is the foundation for the integrity of its natural and cultural values. So um, it, it absolutely embraces wilderness as one of the key uh, values of the area and indeed um, um, the, the key value of integrity. Uh, wilderness protection should be afforded, wilderness should be afforded key protections uh, here in Tasmania, it's, and it's expressly required in a number of documents. The World Heritage Area Management Plan calls for wilderness to be protected. Uh, the Tasmanian Wilderness World Heritage Area Tourism Master Plan identifies wilderness as a value that needs to be protected, and indeed the National Parks and Reserve Management Act identifies wilderness uh, as a value that needs to be protected in national park categories. And I guess I, I raise this not only because the World Heritage Committee uh, just recently passed this, but it's significant because uh, the Tasmanian government still has a policy of inviting expressions of interest for tourism developments that would literally degrade and destroy wilderness, area, wilderness values in the Tasmanian Wilderness World Heritage Area. Uh, there's numerous proposals uh, on the table uh, literally today that breach management plans uh, at the time of their submission, and they would de demonstrably impact on 
on wilderness values. Um, indeed, the expression of interest process still has up on its website uh, an invitation to put forward a tourism proposal, even if it's non-compliant with the management plan. Uh, it says, a participant is not excluded from lodging a tourism EOI submission for proposed development that may not be fully compatible with the current statutory and regulatory framework. Uh, so, you know, it begs the question, why is it that the government's inviting uh, to developments that are non-compliant with the management plans, the very documents that are written to protect the heritage values of these areas. Examples of some of the developments that are on the table at the moment, of course, are Lake, uh, the Lake Malbina helicopter accessed luxury huts where uh, zoning was changed and there's no social licence. Uh, the, the South Coast Track huts where there was a, a long prohibition on huts in the Southwest National Park removed uh, in the uh, 2016 management plan. And of course, a, a Lake Rodway log at Cradle Mountain. Um, zoning was changed there and it's obscenely large uh, in proportion to where that is. So it's sad to see management plans being changed to facilitate uh, developments, but ultimately uh, this retrospective statement of outstanding universal value articulates exactly why wilderness needs to be protected and indeed it actually gives uh, new Minister um, Dygan uh, everything he needs to strengthen the reserve activity assessment process in parks and reserves so that the parks service actually does wilderness assessments, actually assesses uh, the impact of these developments on wilderness values so it can honour and uphold the protections that are afforded uh, by the National Parks and Reserve Management Act, uh, the management plans and the like. And uh, more importantly, particularly when it comes to uh, the Lake Malbina uh, development, it gives uh, Federal Minister Tanya Plibersek everything she needs to do, everything she needs uh, to reject the Lake Malbina project because it's yeah. utterly clear that it contravenes uh, the management plan. It would impact uh, on the wilderness values and as uh, demonstrated by the World Heritage Committee, wilderness values are central to the importance of that property.